All right, look what followed me home. A uh, old school oscilloscope. So uh, this will be great. It's, a, it's a not working, definitely broken inside, I've been told. The guy tried to repair it, but he didn't have the skills necessary for such an old school thing. He kept calling it old school and says, yeah, well, I'm old school too. So, <laughs> uh, Kikusui. So Kikusui is uh, still around. They make some nice electronic loads um, and uh, some oscilloscopes from the vintage days. I'm not sure if they still make oscilloscopes or not, but I think they were a pretty high-end brand. Uh, so it should be a nice one. It's a 100 megahertz scope. So yeah, this is a pretty fancy model. Um, it's got uh, three channels as well. So it's got a, a funny little third channel here. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, it's got uh, delay time base. Um, it's got a little uh, lock doesn't work in that. Uh, what else do we have here? Pretty normal stuff. Oh, two, two different calibrations. Pretty cool. A two, 200 millivolt and a two volt calibration. I've never seen that before on a scope. Uh, external trigger. Uh, oh, it's got two external. Wait a minute. Fourth channel. It's not a four channel scope. This is channel four. Channel three, channel four. Wow. Wow, maybe it's got two cheesy channels. <laughs> Is that a thing? Cheesy channels? Oh yeah, look at this. Mode. Channel one, channel two, add or chop. Channel three, channel four and five. What? <laughs> what? Wow, X and Y mode. Channel two, invert. Bandwidth limit for 20 megahertz. Very nice. Wow, this is a pretty fancy scope. Yeah, so this will be a this will be a great uh, great repair video. Um, I I did look around and, and I did find a manual for this thing, so we should be in good good shape. So, to all my Japanese viewers, uh, dozo yoroshiku. So yeah, let's uh, let's open it up. I don't want to power the thing on. I definitely want to look inside this thing. He says something's burnt, so <laughs> let's check it out. Yeah, look at all the goodness. Uh, CRT, not too long, not not bad. Uh, here's a delay line wrapped up around in there. Uh, we'll talk about that later when uh, we get it working. Um, there are some ICs, quite a few actually. Here's a uh, here's a 4066 uh, analog switch. Another. 4030, I'm not sure what that one is. So, but anyway, some 4000 series stuff. Not quite sure what year this was uh, This was in. Uh, all of the uh, amplifiers for the front end are in these boxes here, so that's really cool. Let's flip it up on its edge here. So yeah, quite a bit of stuff in there. Quite a bit of stuff. Looks pretty clean though. It's not very dusty, and it uh, doesn't look like uh, it's been butchered too bad. Oh, <laughs> I see the problem right away. Wow. Got a lot of burnt stuff here and some parts have been removed and there are some traces that are floating around. Uh, yeah, so definitely, definitely something bad went down here. Uh, this might be the high voltage section. It says, somebody else has written on it here. X and Y, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. All right. Do you see what I see? Um, yeah, there's like three things here is missing. So that's probably that's probably a diode bridge. Probably a uh, power supply diode bridge is a, a big transform right here, and this is probably the first bridge rectifier, and so it's burned out. So hopefully the uh, 
on the secondary side. And then a whole bunch of stuff is blowing up over here. Uh, a whole bunch of melty things over there and a missing screw and oh goodness. Oh goodness. Let's uh, let's go ahead and flop the board out and see what we see underneath it. So this thing is not coming apart easily. I'm gonna have to read the manual how to take this apart because um, you could see in there now. Zoom in here. Can you can you see what I see? Or you two, let's move you down. Um, you can see way down in there, there's some big burnt areas where some, there's two bridge rectifiers that are missing off the board. And um, there's, that backboard didn't want to let loose, and that's because it's actually all of the pass transistors are connected to a, uh, a big heat sink here, and they're all in sockets, so they're all socketed to this board. But I don't want to pull the board out quite yet. I want to see if I can take it out all as a unit. Um, so anyway, it looks like it's a power supply issue, which is great news because that will be easy to troubleshoot. Um, and hopefully damage was not done before I got a hold of it. Uh, looks like there was some buddy in here. And maybe that we pull the cathode ray out and then we can work on it and then put the cathode ray back in it. Uh, but yeah, there, uh, there you go. I don't have good lighting for this... Uh, this angle, let me change things. All right, sorry for the handheld work, but it's the only way I can really do it. This is uh, my cell phone. So we can kind of take a look at everything in here. It looks, uh, looks pretty nice. 20 kV, yes, children, do not play this at home. Um, so here's the CRT neck and it, we, down buried in there, way down upon the Swanee down there somewhere, um, is a power supply. You can see the caps there in the power supply. And over here, you can see the pass transistors. They're there, they're, they're on sockets. Those are sockets down there. So these are socketed. They plug onto the board and they go to this big heat sink here. Sorry about my fat fingers. Um, and I can't really work on it because the CRT is in the way. So maybe the best thing to do in this thing is pull that CRT out of there. But I'm going to check the user manual. Anyway, down over here, so we can get some wires out of the way, you might be able to see way, way, way down in there. Gosh, the lighting is so poor. I guess that's about as good as it gets. Um, down. Can I point while this thing is going on? Jeez, this is so hard. Anyway, down there, right down there, there's missing parts. There's two bridge rectifiers that are just gone and a very, very black PC board around them. So definitely was a power supply issue. A lot of nice adjustments here. Look at that. Ooh. Nice attention to detail that transistor there. It's probably a high voltage transistor because these leads go off to the neck of the cathode. Yeah, so check this out on the back though. <laughs> this is super cool. This is a uh, nice attention to detail. It's the axis input, uh, channel one output, so you can use the amplifier and take it somewhere else. Um, triggering, but over here, check this out. Channel four position and channel five position. It's a five channel scope. <laughs> That's nuts. That is totally nuts. And over on this side, it's all kind of kind of tucked up under here. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so uh, yeah, I got some uh, thinking to do how to get inside this thing. Focus, you stupid, there you go. Uh, how to get inside here and work on it efficiently, so. So let's take a look at the uh, service manual here. Uh, model COS 6100, very cool. Uh, let's get down here. 
here we go, specifications. Channel one, channel two, five millivolts and five volts. And yeah, it's not great. Sensitivity, 100 megahertz, very nice. Uh, input coupling, 400 volts. Bandwidth uh, for channel B is the same. Channel, ch oh, channel three. Oh, channel three, here we go. So one and two are the first one. Then channel three has 0.1 volts and one volt to 100 megahertz. Channel four and channel five are, they do double duty. They can be a cheesy input or they can be the A trigger and the B trigger. So channel four is the A, a external trigger and channel five is the B external trigger. But you can still you can still display them, I believe, even that when they're being the trigger thing. So you can view the trigger on those two things. So seems like it's a five channel scope, which is just unheard of. Uh, let's see here, 100 megahertz, blah, 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 blah. Dis yeah, see display modes, you can do channel one, add, channel one plus channel two, channel two, channel three, and trigger view, channel four and five. Oh, crazy. Common mode rejection, blah, 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 blah. Triggering, I don't know. Uh, horizontal, B. Jitter. Anyway, this is pretty standard stuff. X, Y mode, five volts. Um, Z axis, trace becomes brighter with negative input, three volt peak to peak. Um, calibration voltages, okay, fine. Line requirements, accessories. Unpacking the oscilloscope. All right, so and then the rest of this is just going to be, you know, what do all the buttons do, blah, 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 blah. And then it's going to get into how does the thing work. I think there was a block diagram here somewhere. I think I went too far. Yeah, I'm probably going too quick. All right, here is the... Uh, power supply section. And uh, we have, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go, we can zoom in a little bit. Let me move it around. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so we have uh, up at the top here, we have a uh, transformer coming in. It's gonna be generating a bunch of things. CRT heater, 6.3 volts. Here's one winding, that's plus minus 45. And here's one plus minus 60 volts, so. Out of this section, we're generating plus 150, plus 12, and plus 55. So that's all CRT stuff. And then down at the bottom, we're generating normal stuff. So we're generating plus and minus 12 and plus five. And the two bridge rectifiers that are smoked and <laughs> missing <laughs> are these two. So the plus and minus 12 volt regulators. Uh, also the one that's generating the plus five. That's kind of interesting. Plus five. It's coming off the negative. Hmm. Zero minus must be minus that looks like minus five. That's kind of weird. I don't quite understand that. Minus 21 volts. Anyway, uh, what we have to worry about is this section here. So uh, these bridge rectifiers, they may have gone bad when the capacitor shorted. So we'll check into those. Or the pass transistor shorted. Something happened. So we should uh, probably be looking at replacing all of this stuff, uh, or at least taking a look at it. Oh, it looks pretty bad in there. Um, yeah, so pretty standard stuff. I'm not familiar with ATA7179, but it looks like it's just a standard, uh, it's like a, a 7723 type of chip. It's taking a look at, uh, has a built-in reference and is taking probably a look at other things. It's 
connected here to the output and the yeah it's driving the uh driving the bases of these of these transistors so plus or minus 12. Um, so even if we can't find a 71 79 we, we could we could rebuild this whole thing probably with two with just two voltage regulators right a plus 12 regulator and a minus 12 regulator You'd probably bypass all of this i'm not sure how much current they need it still might need a bypass to uh transistor but maybe not maybe you can just replace this all with a three terminal regulator these days and the same with the plus five but uh yeah we'll take a look <laughs>